Almighty Father, might you bless us to live fully into the gift of our baptisms, that we might be planted into your world to serve you, to be agents of justice and peace, to be disciples and to build the kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Some years ago, I was chatting with the then Bishop of Georgia, and he told me about an encounter he had while attending the Lambeth Conference in England. Now, if you don't know, the Lambeth Lambeth Conference takes place every 10 years. And all the bishops from the 37 provinces of the Anglican Communion, more than 750 bishops, gather together for several weeks of study and prayer and working together. During the conference, the bishops are divided into smaller groups where they meet every day to discuss papers and to work on issues. These working groups are designed to be diverse, composed each of them of English bishops, European bishops, American bishops, African bishops, and Asian bishops. Over the course of the conference, these bishops frequently engaged in theological and ethical conversations, sometimes debates. One morning in uh, the Bishop of Georgia's small group, they were sitting around discussing some issues like human sexuality or whether or not there was a need for a new prayer book. And the conversation was getting rather passionate at times. But there was one African bishop who remained very quiet. Finally, after about an hour, he was asked for his opinion. He was invited into the conversation. Quietly and in broken English, the bishop explained that while these subjects were interesting and that such debates were a luxury for him that he could not afford, he had other issues on his mind. When they asked him to elaborate, He said that as a Christian bishop in a small but very fundamentalist Muslim nation, the main issue on his mind was whether or not he could condemn his people to death. The bishops of the group were shocked and said, tell us more. He went on to explain that many of the local people in his diocese were coming to him wanting to be baptized. Peasants, poor people living in rural villages would walk long distances asking to be baptized. They often brought their entire families, proclaimed their faith in Jesus Christ and asked the bishop to baptize them. However, the bishop knew that to do so might seal their fate. In his country, it was illegal to become a Christian. To be a Christian in his country, you had to be born a Christian. If someone was caught converting, they were put to death. So to baptize an entire family might lead to all of them dying for the faith. And this bishop explained he was not sure whether he was prepared to create martyrs. He said he knew his people understood the risks they were taking. They were not stupid. He said, but they came anyway. They knew the cost of that water being sprinkled on their heads. And they wanted it anyway. It's an amazing story, so foreign to us in the Western world. But on this day when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, I think it's a story worth telling. We baptize babies by the dozens. And the most stressful things we have to deal with are, will the baby cry? (laughs) Which I tell all the families is fine. 
The second most stressful thing we have to deal with is will I be able to get everything together for the brunch? <laughs> and can we find a date when the entire family can be there? For most of us, baptism is this lovely and sweet ritual. We take it for granted. If you're a Christian, baptizing your baby is just something you do. All of us remember when we graduated from high school or from college. All of us remember our wedding anniversaries, or at least the wives do. <laughs> but how many of us know when we were baptized? Have you ever seen your baptismal certificate? If you have, is it framed and hanging on your wall? Do you know who performed the ceremony? Do you understand yourself as fundamentally different because of your baptism? Baptism's just so easy. It comes without risk. It comes without cost. Therefore, sometimes it comes without meaning. What we do today, and 40 to 50 times in this church every year, has immense implications. Whether we know it or not, whether we claim it or not, our baptisms signify that fence-sitting has ended. The freedom of uncommitment is over. Wondering where you stand in life, confusion about who you are and who directs your life are no longer ambiguities. When you are baptized, you are made a member of the body of Christ. You die and rise with our Lord into new life, and you are marked, literally marked, as Christ's own forever. When we are baptized, our allegiance is made public, and our solidarity with others who profess Jesus Christ is made manifest. Our baptism is our epiphany. It's our showing forth in response to God showing forth in Jesus. It means we belong to something bigger than family or even national identity. We have been claimed as Christ's own and given an invitation to a new life. There's a wonderful old folk tale from India about a, a good king who ruled wisely and well. One day, this king called his three daughters together and told them that he was leaving on a long journey. He said, I wish to learn more about God, so I am going away to spend a long time in prayer. In my absence, I will leave the three of you in charge. However, before I leave, I would like to give each of you a gift a gift, I pray, that will help you learn how to wisely use your power to rule. Then he placed in each of their hands a single grain of rice. The first daughter tied a long and beautiful golden thread around her grain of rice, and she placed it in a beautiful crystal box which she put in the center of her table. And every day she looked at that golden grain and it reminded her of her beloved father. The second daughter took one look at this single grain of rice and threw it away, thinking it unimportant. The third daughter just looked at her grain of rice for a long, long time until she finally understood what to do with it. And she went outside and took that grain along with others and planted them in the ground. And eventually she turned 
those seeds into vast fields of rice for her people, fields of hope and nourishment. When the father returned years later, he asked his three daughters what they'd done with their rice. Though he was polite to his first two daughters, no, it's okay. My sermons do that to lots of people. Thank you all for not screaming. I appreciate it. Though he was polite to the first two daughters, he didn't respond to their explanations with much enthusiasm. It was only after the king saw the fields of grain resulting from his third daughter's wisdom that he responded with delight. Taking the crown off his head, he placed it on hers. And he said, Beloved, you alone have learned the meaning of the power that I gave you. And from that day forward, his youngest daughter ruled the kingdom wisely and well. Baptism is just this kind of a precious gift given to us by our Lord. However, some people pay little attention to what they have been given. Like the daughter who locked her grain into the crystal box, they simply put their baptisms away. They reduce them to a memento, to a certificate glued into a baby book, or shoved into the back of a family Bible. Some people just disregard their baptisms altogether as an old tradition, casting them aside as irrelevant, just like the second sister. But some people discover what to do with this amazing gift. They allow this gift to be planted inside of them. They allow the Spirit to cause them to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. They allow themselves to be planted by Christ into our hurting world, where they work to sow and to produce for the sake of the kingdom. Those who are baptized in Jesus don't need to strive after a new life. They've already been given one through the dying and rising of Jesus. But they do need to nurture that new life so that it can grow and mature. That's what church is for. That's what Bible study is for. That's what prayer is for. It's like the parable of the sower. Many seeds sprouted up, but only a few grew into maturity. Be careful not to overlook the gift that lies in front of you. Be careful not to take for granted the power and the importance of your baptism. Sometimes the greatest gifts are free and much grander than we imagined possible. Atheists would say that we leave this world the same way we came into it, alone and anonymous. The gift of baptism says otherwise. Baptism says we are named and known by God, loved and empowered to live life as disciples of Christ, and promised that in the end, not even death can separate us from the God of love. Amen.